Hello friends, this is Rupesh and watching CBNet's video series on data structure and algorithm series and this video is about iterative post order traversal of a binary tree. So we know if we will use recursive method then it will be very easy to traverse a binary tree either post, pre or in but when it comes to iterative it is really very confusing and it takes time to actually build or write the code okay and even thinking takes time and generally people do ask these things in the interviews okay. So if you'll know this, I mean, if you watch this video for one time and then maybe it will help you to remember or at least think quickly, okay? So stay till the end, it won't be wasted. So let me tell you what is post-order traversal using this tree. So we know that for post-order, it will be like L, R and P. So first we'll go to left and then if it is possible, then we'll go to right and then we'll print. Meaning after completing left and right portion of your root, you will print the root okay so first you will complete this portion then you will complete this portion then only you will go for this portion so this is like you will cover left and then right and then you will print it okay or do whatever operation you want to do or simply visit i have always explained this in my other videos also but i'll still write l r p this is, this is for post order okay and l p r this is for in order because this is in between this p is in between l and r okay and l sorry not l p l and r this is like your p is at the beginning okay so this is like pre-order so the magic is you will think about this p which is like for printing or visiting i mean in my college days i used to learn like l n and r so i used to concentrate this on node so i used to say node and this means whatever operation you want to perform so let's see that because now we are going to concentrate on this one l r p so it is applied like this you will apply this l r p at every level okay l r p so you're going to start from here right because this is your root so first you will go to left okay you reached here l r p applies here also you will go to left here also you will try to go to left you cannot go then you will try to go to right this is also gone but you cannot go now you will print it see now this is the turn for printing so you will print six okay so this is complete now i'll go back so you went here because of this l right so what is left i mean what is uh, remaining r and p so you'll go to r if you can go you will go yes you can go from here to here now you are here right so you'll try to go to left you cannot go then you will try to go to right you cannot go then what is remaining p p is for printing so you'll print two now similarly now you're done so you'll go back from here to here and what remains is printing so now you'll print so you'll print four so similarly see now you are done with this much tree right so you'll go from here to here so you went from three to four because of this left right now you are back from here to here and what is remaining r and p correct so you'll go to this location and r is done and similarly now you will go to left so you'll come here so l r p so you'll try to go to left you cannot go you'll try to go to right you cannot go then you will print so you'll print eight now you'll go back you are done left you will go to right now so you'll go from here to here similarly you cannot go to left you cannot go to right now you'll print it so five now you'll go from here to here what remains is p so you'll print it so you'll print one and then you'll go from here to here what remains is this p so you'll print three so like this you actually Travers. Easy, right? I mean, you cannot forget this if you understand it like this. Now, let's quickly see how you will achieve using one stack. So, I will have one stack here, and there'll be one temporary variable like root. So, you will pass some pointer, right? So, we'll take that temporary variable and assign that root into this, and we'll check three is not null. So, we'll push that three into this, and we'll go to left. We'll reach at four. So, root will be pointing to four now is this null no it is not then we'll push four here and then we'll go further and this time it will be six here six is null no it is not then we'll push six into stack then we'll try to go back i mean go, go left but it is null the moment we'll see null you will check whether it has right child or not so six doesn't have any right child and why we are processing six because this is on top of the stack okay this is your stack so we are processing this six and we found that there is no 
right hand side. So then we will take this out and we will print it. Meaning this is the leaf node. It doesn't have left and right and then we'll print six. Similarly, as this is gone, our root is still pointing to null, but this stack is not empty. So we'll take this four into the consideration. Does four have right child? Yes, it have. So we'll push that two here first. So we'll make this two and then we'll put this here. Then we'll try to go left from this two. Okay. And that time we will have null here. And as I said, once you have null, you will take the topmost element from the stack and you will see that, okay, does it have right child? It doesn't have right child. Two doesn't have right child because it is leaf node. So we'll take this two out and we'll just print it. Let me erase this. Now see, this is really a very important point. You have taken out this two, right? Now, how you will decide that should you print four or not? So you will decide the recent popped out element. This two was right child of this four. If yes, then you will take this out and you will print it. We'll see the code for this. So don't worry. So now three before removing three, you will check. Is there any right child for this? Yes, it will. So we will have one here and then we'll push that one here. And then you will try to go to left. I'll put eight here. And similarly, as this is leaf node, we'll have to take this out because we'll try to go to left. We will not be able to go. We'll try to go to right, but we will not be able to go. And then we will have to take this eight out from here. So we'll take that out and this root would be pointing to null. Okay. Now we are done with this much portion. Then we'll go back here at this node and we'll check. Does it contain right? Yes, it does. We'll push that right. And before pushing, we'll push, I mean, put here and then push into the stack. And similarly, we'll try to go to left of this. And then this will be initialized with null and we'll see that, okay, it is null. Then we have to check, does this contain right child? It doesn't. So we'll take this out and we'll print it. Now we are left with one. As I said, we removed five and we are at one. We will see we removed something. Was it a right child of one? Yes, it was. Then we'll simply remove this one and print it because we know that we have just completed right subtree of this one. So we have to print this now. Okay. So five is gone. One is gone. And similarly for three, we'll check whatever we just recently popped out. Is it the right child or was it the right child for three? Yes, it was. Then we'll just simply take this three out and we'll print it. So this is going to be the order. And this is how it is going to look like when you will code it. So initially you will push three as the input and we'll check if root is equal to null. We'll just simply return it. Otherwise we'll create a stack here. Instead of root, I am taking this current for null checking. Okay. So I will use this current instead of root variable, what I was using before. And then simply check that. Okay. If while loop should run, if stack is not empty or if current is not empty. Okay. So either of them should be having values, then only this while loop will work. So currently stack is empty, but current is not equal to null pointer. So it will go inside this and current is not equal to null pointer. So it will check, it will push that current into the stack and current will become currents left. So we'll go from here to here. And as we did not go to else, we'll go back. And this time stack is also not empty and current is also not null pointer. So we'll again come inside this. And if current is not equal to null pointer, we'll push that into the stack. So let me create the stack for you. We can just simply push three and then later four. And similarly, we'll go for six. And the moment we'll go for the left of this, because when we are pushing this six here inside this, this current will become currents left. So currents left would be null pointer, right? And then we'll go for again looping. Next time we'll see that, okay, current is equal to equal to null pointer. So we will not go into this loop. I mean, if statement will go into the else one and we'll take that stack top right out because we have just confirmed that the left is null, but we don't know about the right. So what we'll do, we'll take this top meaning six tops, right? So tops, right is also in this case is null. We'll see that this is null. And then if this is equal to equal to null, then we'll do this much. Otherwise we'll just make temporary whatever we received as current pointer and we'll go back. So if it is null, then we have to do some operations. What is that? First of all, you have to take this out six. So we have taken this out and we'll print it. So let's print that six. 
and then we'll check this while loop. This while loop is important when you will go from here to here, you will go from here to here, then only you will process this for right. So this while loop is for that. See, it is checking if temp, what is temp currently? Currently temp is pointing to six and we are going to check if this is equal to stacks top right. So currently stacks top is four. No, this is not true because it is actually left. So we'll not go inside this while loop and then this else is completed, we'll go back. And remember current is still pointing to null. So we'll not go inside this loop. If statement, we'll go inside this and this time stack top right would be, so temporary will be pointing to two now. So if temporary is equal to is equal to null, no, it is not. So we'll just initialize this current equal to temp. So now this time current will become two and we'll go back into the loop. If current is not equal to null pointer, no, current is not equal to null pointer. So current is equal to two now. So we'll push that current into the stack. So this six is gone. We have two now. Okay. And then after this, we'll go back again. But before that we would have done current is equal to currents left. So current is now pointing at null because two's left is null. And this time it will not go inside this because current is null. We'll go here. We'll take stacks top, which is this two right element, which is actually a null element. So if it is equal to equal to null, yes, it is equal to null. And then we'll take out that top, which is two inside this temporary and we'll print that. So we have printed two. And now this time we're going to check while stack is not equal to empty. Yes, it is not empty and temporary, which is two now is equal to equal to stacks top right. So as I have removed, so stack stop is this four now. So is this two is equal to equal to stacks tops right? Yes, this is force right. Meaning we have just completed force right hand side subtree. Meaning we have just completed everything in the right hand side for this four. So this time we'll print four also now. See, and we'll take out this four from here and then we'll go back current is still pointing to null. So we'll not go inside this and we'll come back here. And this time stack stops right, which is this three is one. So we'll have one here is one equal to equal to null pointer. No, it is not. Then we'll go and initialize this one into the current. Okay. So this current will become one now. And similarly, this will work. So we'll go from here to here, from here to here, and then we'll print eight here. And then we'll go back here, we'll go here and then we'll print five and then we'll go back here, we'll print one and then three. Okay. You pause the video, try to understand, you'll get this. So the time complexity of this algorithm is order of n because we are visiting each and every node only one time. And similarly, order of the space complexity is like order of h, which is the height of the tree in worst case. So, I mean, this stack will be filled at max the height of the binary tree. Okay. So thanks for watching guys. Bye bye. Take care.